I'm with Peter Lipman, who's uh, chair of the Transition Network and uh, one of the speakers opening the 2011 conference. And Peter, you were talking about the way in which transition thinking and practice has a lot of immediate relevance. We're all concentrated here substantially on climate change, peak oil, the threats that that brings, and the need for resilience in the face of that. You gave a couple of examples which struck me as very relevant in the here and now. Yes, I, I started by talking about a recent uh, risk report that's come out from the World Economic Forum, uh, uh, you know, the, the biggest companies in the world, basically, looking at what are the major risks that we all face during 2011, 2012. And they came up with three or four things at the top of their having a big impact and being highly likely to occur. Those were uh, climate change, uh, uh, serious economic uh, volatility around energy prices, uh, fiscal crisis generally. And of course these are all things that we are in any event addressing in transition. And it's interesting to see the business world starting to catch up with us. And, and I went on to link that to the extraordinary importance of, of our process of, of um, supporting groups to build their own resilience in the face of shock. And an example, one example I gave was uh, an incredibly heartwarming report back from some of the things that have been happening in New Zealand following the recent earthquakes, where we've been getting reports that actually the community groups that have responded very quickly and very effectively have been transition groups because they've built a process where they care about community um, support, they think about how to do it, but they think about how to do that in the context of a shock. An earthquake, of course, is an enormous physical shock. Uh, but, but the things we think about around climate change, around peak oil, around economics, they lead to physical as well as intellectual or emotional or spiritual shocks. So, so that was incredibly, incredibly reassuring, really, that the process that we've been designing as we go along and making up as we go along does seem to be having some really positive effects. And another thing that struck me that I didn't mention this morning was um, the, the incredibly rapid impact of fiscal change that we're seeing. So with, with what's going on at the moment in the so-called pigs countries, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain, um, and, 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 and the emo enormous social unrest that is starting to be generated from that, uh, uh, absolutely rightly, when you look at countries like Spain with 45% of people under 25 unemployed. And of course, what we're doing in transition around our um, looking to support social enterprises i.e. businesses that generate livelihoods but are based in communities and are, are predicated on not causing environmental and other forms of damage, then again that feels to me to be an absolutely appropriate response. So it's, it feels very exciting, uh, albeit as always daunting, to be coming together to talk about how do we make these things happen better, faster, how do we scale them up given the, 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 the scale of what we're facing really. So given the conjunction of interests there, what does that enable people locally who are trying to expand their group, engage more people? How does that help them have conversations with people? And somebody says, well, kind of what's the point of transition? Isn't that yeah. just all very green stuff and not very relevant to my life? Well, I've never seen the transition movement as being part of the green movement or the environmental movement. I see an enormous part of what motivates us as coming from an awareness of the natural world which we're part of uh, the environmental issues but also it being about social issues and justice justice and equity when we talk about resources being limited uh, resource scarcity i.e. I, I peak oil for example well the importance of that is how do we access what we need as people without causing destruction and so that's immediately going into issues around social justice. So at a time when more and more people are, say, fuel poor or transport fuel poor, can't afford to get to where they need to get to to do the things they need to do, can't afford to heat their homes, can't afford to do things, that's where the growing transition focus on social enterprise, the growing transition focus on finding purpose and meaning in our lives without necessarily owning things, uh, is incredibly relevant. How do we bring that into our conversations? I, I think the start is by listening, not by saying we have, we have something that you should engage with. It's by listening to people and saying what's going on for you in your life. 
and then through listening, being able to open it into a conversation about what we're doing and why we're doing it. But I think it's really crucial that, that we start from listening.